So we're here at the Uptime Symposium. I'm here today with George Slesman, who's the CEO of I.O. And uh, George, thanks for spending some time with us. Uh, no problem, Rich. We're standing here in front of an I.O. Anywhere data module, uh, the standard unit of delivery for data center capacity in the modular world. Uh, this is a D200A, which is a 200 kW, or standard uh, delivery footprint, um, in, in internally uh, upgradable to you know, well over 500 kW of IT capacity. Uh, you want to take a walk in and see inside? Yeah, let's take a look. Let's go. So here we're standing at the uh, end of the, the module. In a system of modules, you would assemble multiple of these modules depending on your uh, uh, density needs and, and deployment needs for your data center um, into a system. Uh, the system then is connected to a power module, so that you're in the exact same footprint that we have designed, engineered, and manufactured as well. And then you would assemble those, connect those to utility power and also to outside generation and, and chiller capacity. I mean, we can see here in the module, um, you have a full four-foot cold aisle, and then on the other side you have a full three-foot uh, three hot aisle, um, designed for enterprise use and accessibility. As we walk through it, you'll notice that it's uh, you know fully equipped for being able to manage and operationalize your data center infrastructure, your IT infrastructure, without um, really being impeded from a from a physical uh, use. The yeah, let me are, let me ask real quickly yeah. about the about the size piece because that seems to be important for folks. The the first generation of products. You know, ISO containers pretty tight inside, whereas this is a, to tell me a little bit about the dimensions and how you approach things differently. Yeah, so I mean, from our approach was to start with the problem, which is to understand what the modules are we're going to be used for and what data centers are currently used for. Um, primarily focused on our customer base, which is the enterprise users, to understand how that works and then design a system that accommodates those needs, right? So accessibility, be able to get in and out of the module, the type of gear that goes into the module, networking devices, storage devices, CPU devices, freestanding equipment, right? So again, we started with the IT user and said, what do you put into your data center? And then design a module around that. Then we looked right. at the IT loads uh, that would need to be inside the module. We looked at the upgrade progression as well because one of the real advantages to this technology platform and to our modules is that you can upgrade in place over time. That the same rack can go from 4KW to 8KW to 12KW to 25KW upwards of 30KW per rack place without having to refit the IT so you can continue to upgrade in place. So we took all of those into consideration in the design effort and then designed purposefully a structure around that. So this is this is a purpose-built structure. We manufacture the frame, we manufacture the overall infrastructure layer, and then have designed it to work integrally. So it, it, instead of taking something that was designed for intermodal shipping, like an ISO container, and, right. then, and then put IT equipment into, into it, we said, what is the IT equipment that needs to go into the data center? What do you need to do with it? How do you want to manage it? How do you need to interact with it? And then we purposefully designed a modular architecture around that. So I think when as we walk through this, you'll see the fundamental difference between this module and what it does and, and what an ISO container does. Um, one of the first things I'd point out as we walk through, you notice that there's no cooling infrastructure visible as you walk through the module. That's because it's all below in what's called the support space in the module. So a module itself is broken into two sections internally. You have the support space, which is below the floor, which is where all of the infrastructure sits, the, the energy recovery or cooling infrastructure, right. as well as all the supporting infrastructure, controls, fire suppression, leak detection, all of the things that control the module manager in that support space. It's also physically and, 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 and logically um, uh, separated from the tech space, which is where the IT is. So you can service the module without entering the space where the IT equipment is located. Again, another key requirement of, of our customer bases for security and accessibility during maintenance. Um, you'll also notice then in the tech space, which is what we'll walk through, um, every component of the module is on um, conditioned power. So UPS power to all of the air handling, 100% continuous cooling, LED lighting, um, power distribution um, is located in row um, with the 18 or 20 racks uh, that you can place in the module. You'll notice on the side here, the silver panel is where the IOS control panel would be located if you opt for that option in the, in the individual module. Um, and again, you can see a very, very comfortable working environment, um, good height access for all your uh, enterprise cabling infrastructure and your standard racking infrastructure. We've um, designed it to accommodate all um, equipment types, so freestanding IBM gear, freestanding storage gear, freestanding EMC gear, uh, mainframes have been deployed inside these modules, so it'll accommodate any variant of, of architecture and then also any densities as well. So tell us a little bit about airflow and how 
the, the cooling that is handled in the Absolutely. Industry. So what we did is we took the, 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 the previous generation of, of static pressurization that we did in our legacy data center environment, we then adopted to the module. So um, we had a piece of technology called the thermo cabinet, which is an right. ultra high density cabinet that we designed and, and implemented in, in our data centers. We then took that same approach of static pressurization to the module. So in the subfloor below us, there's eight um, modular bays that house um, modular air handlers that we designed and architected. Those modular air handlers um, then have variable speed plug fans on them that maintain pressure in the cold aisle. Um, that pressure then is isolated from the hot side through your cabin infrastructure and your thermal barrier. And then the fans in the servers themselves actually work with our fans. So as your fans and your servers ramp up, the pressure drops on this side, our fans ramp up incrementally. So it gives you this integral system where the fan, you're not duplicating CFN capability between the servers and the fans in the, in the cooling infrastructure. The, the heat is then rejected either through straight air-to-air -air economization in our modules or through water, um, through uh, chill water. Um, which then can be economized using hydronic economization or water side economy, economization as well. So we can drive PUEs from you know 1.05 up to you know kind of 1.17, depending on your choice of, of thermodynamic uh, heat rejection. And then you know it can creep up a little bit higher than that, depending on your environmental conditions as well. So if you're in a, a, a highly stable environmental uh, uh, location like Colorado. Um, where you have low humidity and low temperatures, um, you know, year-round wet bulb temperatures, you can run these systems at a very, very sustainable rate um, in the in the low ones uh, for the PUE. Okay. So, yeah, let's let's see what's here. So again, you can see, you know, rack infrastructure. It's a full four-foot um, aisle on the front side. We can meet ADA compliance with the module as well as OSHA compliance, which is two important things when you consider putting this into an enterprise workplace. Um, the modules are also in the process of finishing their UL listing as well, so these can be um, deployed in, in a jurisdiction very, very comfortably and also meet all the local standards as well. We're doing international localization for the modules for Europe, um, UK, Australia, Singapore, Mexico, um, so we'll be able to ship those uh, into those markets this year as well. Okay. Exited the end of the module, and we'll turn around and go back through the uh, what is the hot aisle. You can see also here on the external of the module, we have full security, um, fire suppression security, and access controls built into each individual module and controlled independently in each module. So, from a logical perspective, each one of these modules is its own compartmentalized 200 kW data center that you can upgrade concurrently, maintainably from 200 to well over 500 kW in the same footprint. This then is the hot aisle. Um, again, it's a three foot hot aisle. So again, equivalent working space as most enterprise data centers from a delivery. Um, very comfortable uh, to use. And you can see from the scale of it, it's just, it's, 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 it's not, I mean, I, I hate to use the term, but it's not a container. And it's very important to understand. So now we've completed an entire uh, tour of a D200 uh, data module in the IO Anywhere platform. Uh, 18 to 20 server racks, 200 kW to over 500 kW of capacity, um, full compartmentalization of inf your infrastructure, uh, control infrastructure, fire suppression, leak detection, uh, lighting, fan, air handling, power distribution, security access control, all compartmentalized in a module that can be ordered and delivered within 90 days. So if uh, folks are interested in learning more about the IO Anywhere and, um, uh, and some of its features, where can they go? Uh, best place to get information uh, without contacting us is through our website at io.com. Uh, from there, you can reach out to our team. We'd be more than happy to uh, uh, host you at an executive briefing, either in our Phoenix data center or New Jersey data center. And also, we have customer sites where we can uh, host you and, and show you modules deployed at customer's locations. It's important for me to note that these modules are deployed and sold to customers who can deploy them at your, at your data center, at your location, as well as we will host them in our data centers um, as well. Okay, George, listen, thanks so much for uh, uh, spending some time with us and then showing us the module. Great. Thank you, Rich.